Hello, good evening, and welcome to News at 10 Live from our studio here at Adesawe in Accra. I am Martin Asidu Date. This bulletin is also streaming live on our website, 3news.com, and also on Facebook. We're going straight to the headlines that we have for you this evening. So, the very latest regarding Ghana's COVID numbers. Ghana has recorded two more deaths from coronavirus, bringing the number of deaths to 38. 227 new COVID-19 cases have also been recorded, pushing Ghana's confirmed cases to 8,297. 2,986 persons who contracted the virus have so far recovered. Now following the president's easing of restrictions, the Ministry of Education has announced all senior high school students in schools with boarding facilities would be allowed to stay in the boarding houses. At a news conference in Accra, Education Minister Dr. Matthew Opoku Prempep maintained there shall be no form of religious activities in schools once they reopen following President Akufado's easing of COVID-19 restrictions. Let's move to politics. The Criminal Investigations Department, CID, is investigating the PNC's chairman, Bernard Mona, for offensive conduct offensive to the breaches of peace. Bernard Mona was invited by the CID following some pronouncements he made against the Electoral Commission. And our former Deputy Minister for Local Government under former President John Ajekum Kufo's administration, Captain Nkrabia Ifadata retired, wants Parliament to take seriously the conditions of former members of Parliament. The former MP himself for Burekum says MPs who did their work truthfully are living in poverty. So those are the stories we have for you based on developments here in Ghana. Let's find out what's happening elsewhere around the world, starting from the United States of America. Clearly, the death of uh, George Floyd doesn't seem to go away anytime soon and the protests that it has sparked. The latest regarding that is uh, the U.S. president has waded into the controversy. Washington's Catholic Archbishop has strongly criticized President Donald Trump's visit to a shrine as civil unrest continues over the death of a black man in police custody. Archbishop Wilton D. Gregory said the visit misused and manipulated the St. John Paul II National Shrine. Meanwhile, filmmaker Spike Lee has said people in the U.S. are angry because they live every day in their world where the system is not set up for you to win." Unquote. Now, a report by Public Health England says people from ethnic minorities are, a higher, are at a higher risk of dying from the coronavirus. It shows age remains the biggest risk factor, while being male is another. The impact of COVID-19 is also disproportionate for other Asians, Caribbeans, and black ethnicities. And finally, Zimbabwean troops and police Tuesday blocked thousands of people from entering central Harare because of a spike in coronavirus cases. Proven cases of the coronavirus have trebled in the past month to 203 with four confirmed deaths. A, stri um, a strict lockdown was imposed in March, but relaxed somewhat last month for uh, businesses to return to normalcy in that country. Thank you very much for staying with us. We're going straight to the details of our stories now. And we would also like to hear from you on a number of the stories we are going to be treating this evening. Do get interactive with us on our various social media platforms. And you can personally follow me on Twitter and on Instagram at Newsy Martin, N-E-W-S-Y Martin. Let's get talking or chit-chatting on social media. All right, uh, let's go to some gory story and unfortunate development that happened this evening. Two people are feared dead in an accident that occurred at Gumwa or Sam Krum near Aguna Suedro in the central region around 12.30 Tuesday afternoon. 
The accident involved a gas tanker and a Hyundai Grace uh, Irvine, which occurred after uh, at the just around the Osekrom Prison Junction after a private car wrongfully overtook the Hyundai bus. Information gathered says the driver of the tanker, which was from Accra, heading towards Aguna Suedru, lost control and pushed the Winneba bound urban bus, falling into a ditch together. Uh, five persons, including the tanker driver and his assistant, two passengers, and the Hyundai driver's assistant survived the accident and are receiving treatment at the Aguna Suedru Municipal Hospital. Private car, and Private car, and now gas tanker car, no so today. private car, no When two when all right, so uh, that was an eyewitness who gave us a report earlier when it happened. Um, what we do know is that uh, the National Fire Service was able to get to the scene early enough. Uh, as of this evening, we are told that they've been able to ease traffic around that uh, stretch of the road. We'll keep an eye on this development and keep you posted in our subsequent bulletins here on TV3. Away from that, the Ministry of Education has announced all senior high school students in schools with boarding facilities would be allowed to stay in the boarding houses. At a news conference in Accra, the Education Minister, Dr. Matthew Poku Prempe, maintained there shall be no form of religious activities on campuses and in schools once they reopen. And that's following the president's easing of COVID-19 restrictions. Salomon Menya has more. These measures, as announced by the sector minister, are aimed at reducing the rate of COVID-19 infections. Not only that, but to limit physical contact and interactions. Visitors will not be allowed during the period that students are to stay in school especially in the senior high schools, so as to ensure a faster contact tracing process in case of a spike. When schools do reopen, the schools will not be available for religious activities. And it's simple. We don't want too many interactions. There will be no visitors allowed for the period that they are in school. Parents cannot go and visit their kids for that period. Playground activities would not be permitted. Assemblies would not be permitted. To ensure strict compliance to social distancing directives in schools to prevent the spread of the virus, the Ministry of Education has directed that all final year classes should be split into a population size of 25. We do know that average in the senior high school, a maximum class about 50. So we want to maintain classes not more than 25 and in the junior high school, not more than 30. All day students in boarding schools. That means schools that are operated as boarding schools as well. Those day students would have accepted as boarders. For pure day schools, there'll be enhanced protocols to look after the children. Dr. Matthew Opoku Prempe cautioned parents against allowing what who are sick to go to school. We have to understand that somebody's misaction or somebody flouting is a danger to all of us here. If you have a fever, don't go to school. We expect no parent to send a child to school when the child is unwell. If we can all do our bits, I think we can kill this virus as quickly as possible. All right, so probably some of those um, orders being given by the ministry will go down well with those who 
like to run away from school. But let's interrogate this subject matter a while longer. We've been joined on the phone lines by the interim national chairman of the Ghana National Education Campaign Coalition, Joseph Achu Homaji. Good evening, sir. Thank you for your time. Good evening. Thank you very much. Good evening uh, to your viewers. Right. You've heard the education minister about uh, how we can gradually get back uh, to school activities, specifically for final year uh, students. How does your association take these easing restrictions announced by the education minister? Yes, thank you very much once more. Yes, um, this is what we, we, we my organization, or our organization has advocated for, uh, to ensure the safety of the children. In fact, earlier on, we recommended to most of education that final year alone should go. And that has been done. Now, we also recommended that the safety protocols must also be observed strictly. Those measures must be put in place. And I'm happy to say that the ministers are applying the, 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 the protocols, the measures, so that uh, uh, these measures, when well, well, well observed, mm. will protect the children. And we still stand by it. And we also support the Ministry of Education, for that the minister, for these measures. We are only encouraging uh, um, the, the, the school authorities to make sure that the students observe it closely and, 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 and strictly so that we can protect these children from this virus. Because this, these children are young and we need to protect them very, very seriously mm. by way of encouraging them and, and making sure that they observe the protocols very, very strictly. So we agree with the minister. And uh, one, of, one other association, I think, uh, Nagrat, for instance, uh, had an issue with the fact that they were going to ease it quickly and ask pupils to get back to school. They were concerned about the safety of the pupils and that of the teachers as well. Do you think that uh, we are in a good position to start education processes if these um, restrictions are eased? Do you believe we can put everything in place early enough for education work to start? Are you talking about the actual the general uh, uh, of schools? The resumption of schools and the fact that we can have all these protocols in place before the pupils return to class. Well, we, 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 so for the final year students, I think they can quickly do that because the number is not so large. But if you are talking about the entire student population, mm. we do need to, and we, that's why we also uh, would like to say that we have to hold on a bit, make sure we put the measures in place properly before you resume school. But for the final year students, I think because the number is manageable, mm. we can we can they can they, they can go back to school and we expect the 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 the, 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 the Ministry of Education for the Ghana Education Service to put the measures in place. Mm. I will also want to add that as we put these measures in, measures in place, children with disabilities must be catered for or for that matter children with special needs must also be catered for so that they also observe the, 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 the protocols strictly. For example, uh, when education is going on on the COVID-19, COVID uh, whatever in the schools, mm -hmm. for example, if they are deaf children, they must be found like to be catered for to guard them. They're blind, they must be catered for. Other children with special needs must also be catered for so that they can, can strictly observe the uh, protocols and protect their lives. Okay. Uh, finally, there have been calls also for the regular testing of uh, the teaching staff and then pupils while they are on campus. Is that an, a, a call you would agree with? And how frequently yes. do you think we need to be testing the teachers and the pupils on campus? Yes, yes. We, we also recommended that in our statement we issued last week and even yesterday mm -hmm. that uh, testing will be very important. Because that's the, only area, that's the only way you can identify those who have the problem or who have the virus. Then right. you can use that one to protect the rest. So you can also support that position. That testing must be done from time to time so that it's because you see, the virus, the most of the virus is there from, from what you hear from the health experts. Some of them can have it, but you don't show any sign. Right. So, so if you don't do the testing, you will not be able to identify. The, the, those who, who, who have the virus, okay, and that will expose the children to more danger. So we support that position that from time to time, both teaching and non-teaching, and the children must be tested so that in case somebody has developed the virus, mm. then quickly the person will be given medical attention. 
Okay. Uh, and we want you all to support the point that health, uh, I mean, things should go around, especially the nurses. She okay. goes and take care of the monitoring the children so that she did not find any child with any difficulty. Then they can quickly refer the child to. Uh, for, medical for medical attention. medical attention. Okay. Thank you so much for making time to speak with us. Um, uh, the, um, Joseph Achu Homaji is the interim national chairman of the Ghana National Education Campaign Coalition. Still on education, though, the Teachers and Education Workers Union, TEWU, has lauded government for approving the 15% critical uh, support allowance for its members nationwide. Leadership of the union was reacting to a news conference by the education minister um, on the payment of their critical support allowance. For the past four years, has fought for a critical support allowance for its members in the education sector. The critical support, according to the leadership of TEU, is to motivate its members to give their best. Already, some more than 10,000 of its members are benefiting from the critical support, while others are not. After a meeting with the President Nane Kufado and the Minister of Education, the amount will be paid. The 15% critical support allowance is expected to create equity in the salary administration in the education sector. General Secretary of Tewu, Mark Ranchi, was elated about the decision to pay the amount. The security person's uh, work is directly linked to teaching and learning. Uh, the administrator, the typist, and all, name them, all those people have direct link to teaching and learning. Mm -hmm. And so we have fought this battle to the point where now our employers, direct employers, that Ghana Education Service, the Minister of Education, the Presidency, all see the need for all category of staff in the Ghana Education Service to receive this critical support. Mm -hmm. He emphasized on an upcoming meeting with Ghana Education Service and the Education Ministry to finalize implementation schedule. We would meet with Fair Wages and Salaries Commission and then go to finance. And once we meet with finance, we are sure that this, this issue will be over and done with. And that, for me, is, is a very good news. And that is why I say that for us in Tewu, all the things that has been announced, uh, this bit of it is, is, is a very good and welcoming news and we would pursue it to the latter. Meanwhile, Tewu has called on government to provide the protective equipment before schools reopen for the final year students. Meanwhile, the Legon branch of the University Teachers Association of Ghana has called for special allowance and other incentives for lecturers who will be conducting academic work for the final year students when schools reopen. According to UTAC, the special packages will motivate the lecturers in these times of the coronavirus. The Legon branch of UTAC was pledged with a directive of the president, Ane Kufado, for schools to reopen. It said... The long delay in the reopening has undermined academic work for the final year students. With the reopening of the schools, a former national president of UTAC, Dr. Hari Agbanu, called for the provision of protective equipment. We must not be complacent. We must be careful to provide all the needed materials, Veronica buckets for washing hands, hand sanitizers, and fumigating the campus and the lecture halls, the, uh, the dormitories, uh, I mean the halls of residence and what have you, and providing no smarts for everybody. I mean, temperatures must be taken from time to time to be sure we are not uh, having difficulties. He also advocated for special incentives for the lecturers who will be engaging the final year students when the school reopens. Because of the large numbers they handle, we would have to divide this class into several groups and have time for them. Otherwise, it, it will be difficult. But I hope that our authorities and the ministry will know that we are not in you know, normal times, and that certain measures must be put in place to encourage people to, to work even in these very difficult times. 
a former president of UTAC of the University of Ghana branch, Professor Langbon Bimi, was elated the reopening of the schools would allow for practical academic exercise. I would still say if we have to do much of our work online, we should have a period within the academic calendar when these students who we do not interact with come for practicals, especially for the science component, for drama, school of performing arts. How are they, the instructor going to interact with the students online? And much of the work is practically done. He also suggested the need for incentives and recruitment of more lecturers for academic work. If governments so willing from the fund that is established, they want to give us equipment. We don't need cash. Equipment to work with. We enjoy the work we are doing, but we don't want to be half equipped. You know what to do and you cannot do it. So when the students come and we need chemical, we need equipment, they should be coming. If we have to get the PPEs, let it come. The final year students are expected to resume lectures by June 15. This is still News at 10 on TV3. We take a quick breather. When we return, we'll be taking you to Wager, where we are told that water spillage by the Ghana Water Company will be taking place anytime soon. Stay with us. We have details for you. Thank you for staying with TV3. This is News at 10. I am Martin Esiedudati. Let's go on to some other stories now. Access Bank Ghana has stepped up its COVID-19 support efforts by earmarking 300,000 Ghana cities for food, sanitary and personal protective equipment to over 15 municipalities across the country. The beneficiary municipalities selected for this intervention are dotted across over 10 regions of the country. Beneficiary communities include Kole Klote, Ayawasu East, Old Fadama, all in the Greater Accra region. The rest are Asokori Mampong and Abuabo in Ashanti, New Jabing in the Eastern, Takradi Municipal, Fantiakwa District, and Takwan Suayim in the Western region. Other beneficiary regions are the Volta, Bono East, Upper East, and Upper West. You would call that um, at the beginning of this pandemic, Access Bank, uh, through the Ghana Street of Bankers, donated almost half a million CDs um, to the government COVID fund. The bank went on further again to um, donate an ambulance um, and to the University of Professional Studies to cater to emergency cases on campus and also in the community. Each of the beneficiary municipalities received food, sanitary and personal protective equipment. This brings the bank's financial contribution towards the COVID-19 fight so far to over 1.2 million Ghana cities. Chief executives and traditional leaders who received the items were grateful. And just before we go, the Ghana Water Company Limited is spilling excess water from the Wager Dam. Officials say this is part of routine measures to safeguard the dam. Water level in the dam has risen from 37 feet to 47.9 feet as of yesterday. And based on that, they would have to undertake an annual ritual of spilling the excess water. And persons who live in and around the Wager Dam are being advised to move to higher grounds. And that's how we bring the bulletin to a close. Thank you very much for watching. I am Martin Esedudati. There is more news on our website, 3news.com. To have a good evening and as always, stay positive. Bye for now.